another epic episode of the Hyper Anomalous Esoteric Research Organization podcast, aka Hero Paranormal, broadcasting from just south of the old Sherman Ranch in the Uinta Basin of Utah. My name's Ryan, the anomalous ambassador of the airwaves, bringing you an epic episode today. Everybody is talking about leave the world behind, and we're going to get into a little bit of the analysis of the esoteric mentions symbolism, and predictive programming of the film. But really quick, I know the holidays are coming up. If you haven't had a chance to go over to happinessmedical.com, please do me a favor and check out that website. Have an amazing product on there that was invented, created, and developed by my wife. She's an engineer. She's definitely got the brains in the organization. Needless to say, this is a -a one-of-a-kind, the first all-natural organic, moisturizing, hydrating bronzer to technologically infuse coconut oil, aloe vera, and other organic ingredients into your skin so that you can hydrate throughout the dry winter months and keep that amazing tan that you got during the summer. It's great for women, great for men. Check out the product over at happinessmedical.com. It supports the podcast. Tan as if your life depends on it, because it does. And because I'm feeling the spirit, it is that time of year. If you email me directly at pazlumi at gmail.com, that's P-A-Z-L-U-M-I at gmail.com, I will give you an unbelievable discount and pick up the shipping. Unbelievable product makes for a great stocking stuffer. Check it out, happinessmedical.com. And if you haven't been over to HeroParanormal.com, please head on over there. For the price of a cup of coffee a month, you can access all the content. There's a ton of it. If you aren't going over there, you're missing out on a bunch of stuff. And let's get to this. Leave the World Behind is a movie that is number one on Netflix, which is no shocker. The Obamas have all kinds of influence over there at Netflix. And Netflix is an interesting organization. Keep in mind that Mark Bernays Randolph, which was the American tech entrepreneur, advisor, and speaker, the co-founder and first CEO of Netflix, was related not only to Sigmund Freud, but also to Edward Bernays, who incorporated the literature from social science and psychological manipulation into an examination of techniques to quite literally create propaganda. Edward Bernays was no slouch. He knew how to get information into the minds of others. And so does Barack Obama, who in my opinion is the greatest Manchurian candidate ever created. He's the best speaker I've ever heard, regardless of my opinion of him. And they, meaning the Obamas, own their executive producers, which own Higher Ground Production, also known simply as Higher Ground. It's an American production company founded in 2018 by former United States President Barack Obama and former First Lady. Now, what's interesting is they launched Higher Ground Productions by signing a multi-year deal with Netflix to produce scripted and unscripted film and television products. Now, keep in mind that a lot of things seem scripted these days. You know, the belief in UFOs and the fact that our government has now admitted they are real for a few years now makes uh, a lot of us wonder, you know, what kind of era are we entering? The Defense Department and CIA 
have destroyed Senate Majority Leader Schumer's proposed legislation to require them to disclose what they know. And there seems to be some trust issues in the government. The non-human intelligence issue cites that we are in direct communication with, well, what we can only call alien, sentient intelligence. And it seems as if there is a cover-up of the highest level. Okay, so there's that. But at the end of the day, what does this have to do with our daily lives? Well, there is something that is being injected and has been for quite some time ever since Stanley Kubrick entered the stage with 2001 A Space Odyssey. A Space Odyssey and there's, there's this thing I like to call predictive programming, which is basically propaganda, entertainment, and disinformation, misinformation, and actual information all thrown in a blender, mixed into one, and injected by the magic bullet theory or the hypodermic needle theory of mass communication into the minds of the populace, that being us, the observers who wish to be entertained. Well, this is very real, has been going on for a long time, and propaganda is something that has been quite literally perfected from a public relations standpoint. The spin doctors are quite literally cinemagicians who know how to orchestrate like a fine symphony of events and images, what is going into our minds and what the outcome or desired outcome is. So what is it? Well, with Leave the World Behind, it seems to enter us into a new genre of filmmaking. It's a very entertaining movie. And though creepy, it's not nearly as creepy as the Christmas holiday video that's come out of the White House. I guess Jill Biden had a lot to do with this. If you haven't seen it, I highly recommend you check it out. Not only is it very reminiscent of uh, the movie Get Out for some reason, but it seems to me to be just an obvious display of the tax dollars spent at, you know, no expense spared at decorating the White House, even going to the extent of hiring um, dancers, videographers, all the decorators, and just more or less uh, documenting the king-like status and behavior of what I believe a politician who is elected should not probably be doing, in my opinion. You know, just saying Merry Christmas would be enough. But uh, they've really, really pulled out all the stops, making uh, making sure, making it blatant and obvious how extravagant their Christmas extravaganza within the White House has become. Possibly the most disturbing is that, you know, this is most likely funds that could be used to do all sorts of things. And uh, as usual, we have zero say in how they're spent. Anyway, it is what it is. Back to the production of our other Supreme Leader coming out of the same political camp and being an executive producer for this movie, Leave the World Behind. It starts out fairly innocently. You know, family wants to go on vacation. They want to go to an Airbnb. They get one. And almost immediately you can tell something's a little off. And let's go into some of the intricacies here. Well, some of the reasons the film is so controversial is just how much esoteric symbolism is held within its imagery. And as I mentioned before, it's a film on Netflix, so just about everybody can see this. I highly recommend you check it out, whether you're a fan of the Obamas or not. Now, we all know the obvious mythos behind the Illuminati or the super class or power elite controlling the world through a number of ritualized, symbolic enchantments that are usually done at various times of the cosmological calendar, the stars, the planets, and everything in the natural world must align for them to enact, create, and show their governance 
over the masses through the ability of timing, right? It's all about timing these cosmological events. And it's no different with this film. Anyone who follows the World Economic Forum or the United Nations know about the agendas in place by many of these organizations which are comprised of the elites, comprised of the superclass. And they are rumored to engage in these cosmological rituals. Now, what's interesting about this production is the higher ground seems to be producing something on a very low vibrational level, something having to do with quite literally the disastrous dismembering and dislocation of societal norms, the complete disarray and chaos of our world falling into shambles. In other words, the world and its well-being really was left behind on this one. The very first scene is a cosmological event, a cosmic planetary event of the sun coming over, obviously, a globe Earth and starting from a zero point and then quite literally bathing the world in light. And... It's interesting that it starts right out of the gate with cosmology, with a cosmic event, and slowly tiptoes into the esoteric. And when I say it starts out with a cosmological event, I mean it really milks it. There is a lot of time with very simple music behind it. A lot of time showing the sun coming over the globe Earth and the rotation, and the spin, taking its time, taking its sweet, sweet cosmological time, and eventually it does seem to zoom in on the Earth, and begins to embark on the foundation of the storyline. And not just the storyline, but the very next scene is the skyline of New York City complete with the Statue of Liberty on the right, and, of course, the new tower, which replaced the Twin Towers, on the left, complete with its needle-looking attachment at its top, very phallic-looking and tall, a full 1,776 feet tall. That's right, 1,776 the founding of not only our great nation, but also the Illuminati. Let's not forget that May 1st, Beltane, 1776, in Bavaria, an enlightenment of certain individuals, an era of secret societies, began. And that's exactly how tall this building on the left is which quite literally looks like a hypodermic needle. And let's not forget that the building is called the One World Trade Center, also known as One World Trade. So here we have obvious, obvious symbolism of a one world order, a new world order, a one world government, and one world trade. And trust me, we will be getting into the hypodermic needle theory and the magic bullet theory of mass communication when it comes to this type of production. So yeah, we have the uh, beautiful New York skyline with the sun, the same sun that we saw coming over the globe Earth, now coming over the skyline. A great reset from the day before, a new day. A golden dawn, shown in absolute beautiful harmony. And keep in mind, the plot hasn't even started yet. Then the sun is shown coming over a building where the people live, the characters, and then a room painted in blue. And on the left side of the bed, they are under the covers. On the left side of the bed, there is a coffee mug with 76 on it. Obviously, Back to the symbolism and numerology of 7-6 of our country's great B-52 
beginning in 1776, also a nod to the Illuminati with 76. And keep in mind that it's a composite number, a square prime of the form P2, comma Q, where Q is a higher prime. And don't forget that P2, because of course there is the secret lodge of the Vatican, the P2 lodge. But let's not get too deep. Let's just stick with the 76. And already we've seen the One World Trade building, 1776 feet high. So lots of 76s here and moving on. We find it's Ethan Hawke under the covers asking his wife, Amanda, what she's doing. So it starts off with a question, kind of bringing us in. Now, it seems as if Amanda's just kind of had it with life. She's in a aimless job that just collects a paycheck, screwing people over. And we find this out later in the movie, almost towards the end. But she's gone ahead and booked the family a quick vacation, booked an Airbnb, getting outside of the city and a place near the water, kind of out in the middle of nowhere, but still close by. Seems like a perfect scenario. She sells her husband on it. She's already packed the bags. Let's get this show on the road. Now, the occult symbolism throughout the film is magnificent. There's plenty of eyes of providence. You know, the all-seeing eye is seen throughout the, the, the show. A lot of imagery of, well, friends. You know, we recently lost Matthew Perry to... Uh, A hot tub incident under a hunter moon, which is an esoteric symbolic moon where the hunters would use the full moon to go out and hunt deer, etc. And there is a very significant amount of symbolism revolving deer. A lot of deer seen throughout the film in very horrific, kind of creepy, occult ways. And a lot of imagery of friends and... You know, this uh, obsession that the younger daughter has with finishing the Friends TV series. And it culminates with her in the final scene. So, yeah, very, very interesting symbolic reference to the Hunter's Moon through Matthew Perry, through the imagery of Friends, through the various times that deer are shown throughout the movie. And remember that deer kind of signify a sacrifice much like many have said that Matthew Perry's untimely death was timed almost perfectly, if you believe in these sorts of things. Oddly enough, Julia Roberts dated Matthew Perry, so this adds another element of high strangeness to the film. So they head on out of the city into the country in their all-American SUV, a Jeep to be exact, color blue, and there's a lot of blue in the film versus red in the film a lot more blue than red and i don't want to get into the blue pill red pill thing but it seems as if you did get into that the symbolism is definitely on the side of the blue many of the actually all almost all of the bedrooms have blue accents if not blue walls or painted in blue or the bedroom in the airbnb where they eventually end up has a blue ocean Uh, as a backdrop to its headboard. Now, the film is based on a book by the same name from an author, Rahman Alam. And it's interesting that the Obamas picked this to turn into a film. We quickly enter awkward race situations where... As the world slowly falls apart due to the cyber attack, there's the spoiler, it's a cyber attack, um, from an unknown source, the owners of the home, this beautiful home in the countryside, come back because it's kind of their place of safety. And they are black. The Julia Roberts, the couple, Julia Roberts and Ethan Hawke and their son and daughter are obviously white. What's interesting is there is an awkward moment, a lot of tension. You know, is this really your house? Yes, it's really our house. And it turns out that the owner of the home, the black gentleman who is involved in trading, 
financial sector, etc., has some pretty high-end clients. And as the film goes on, we find out that he has kind of uh, found some things out throughout the years. He's had some high upscale friends in the financial sector. One in particular, he describes as having a conversation with, and this guy says, yeah, if you're lucky, you know, the world elite, the quote unquote Illuminati, it, you know, they don't really pull the strings. They're not really a shadowy government organization, although they may meet during ritual solstices, and there's some jokes in the film about that. A secret cabal that runs the world that meets at the solstice. Well, anyway, long story short, this particular friend apparently kind of let a little too much out of the bag one night when they were drinking and having a good time, and he's telling this story to Julia Roberts. His name is G.H. in the movie, or George. And this black gentleman, African-American, decides to tell her a little more. He goes on to mention that his upscale financial sector, you know, whale, for lack of a better word, um, definitely one of the power elite super class individuals on our planet, that this guy called him shortly before this cyber attack, before everything started, you know, planes falling out of the sky, oil tankers running up onto the shore of the beach, and I'm going to get to that in a minute because that's a real interesting scene. But before all this takes place, he moves a bunch of money. He says he moved a bunch of money, even by his standards. He moved a ton of money, and when G.H., the guy talking to Julia Roberts, who owns the bed and breakfast, when he joked, and he said this guy always laughed when he joked, even if it was a bad joke, when he joked about it saying... What's going on? Are you meeting with the secret cabal that runs the world and not on the solstice? There was no laugh on the other end. So it was a serious situation and that this whale of a friend, this high-end power class, super elite individual said to him, take care of yourself. Almost as if in a tone of feeling sorry for him. And this was the heads up that G.H. or George the African-American who owned the bed and breakfast gave to Julia Roberts that he knew something was a little bit wrong. He knew that there was some uh, possible shenanigans taking place at the highest levels of the elite. And he goes on to say that this friend once told him it's not necessarily that they pull the strings to everything and manipulate everything. No one's really in control, which is a scarier thing. And at best, the super class and power elite just get a heads up of what's taking place. And that seems to be the fact here, which has a lot of symbolism, you know, with the recent, you know, uh, situation we had from a health concern scenario as a populace on the planet, where it was insinuated and seemed to be the case that many of the top CEOs stepped down from their positions before you know, this took place. Many people sold their stock options before this took place. And there was a lot of chatter in the populace that those who knew, knew it was coming down the pipe. And that's sort of what is um, referenced here in the film. Similar scenario, a cyber attack is coming, move your money, do your best. And I'm going to break down the whole esoteric nature, the conspiracy symbolism, and the plot of the movie as we go. So it is going to be, there's the spoiler alert. If you haven't seen the movie, please watch the movie before I start, you know, I'm shredding it already, you know, for you. Watch the movie first if you want, or you can hear this first and then compare notes. But I am going to be dropping some spoilers. Now, with the opening scene that I mentioned with the sun coming over the planet, you see these flashbacks, these cosmological images and the symbolism of the cosmos throughout the film. You also see a lot of clocks in the film, which of course is a head nod to Kronos, the god of time, arguably Satan. It is uh, very, very significant. A lot of clocks in the film, not only at the Airbnb, but throughout the film. And I believe that this chrono mysticism is pointing 
esoterically at the idea of humanity having to deal with or being regulated by the cycles of time and the cosmos, the planets, etc. You know, very arguably uh, Illuminati-ish theories, like the very common saying, you know, millionaires believe in astronomy, billionaires believe in astrology. It's all about timing. If you can get the timing right, your view of the world, your window of opportunity exceeds exponentially that of those around you. The cycles, the natural shifting movements and timelines of humanity, it's all about catching those waves, those cycles, those, those shifts. That's, that's how fortunes, multi-generational fortunes are made. And this is all illuminist, of course, theory, theories, symbolism, significance, and the ignorance of these natural laws are what leave the peasant folks, peasant folks. At least theoretically, according to these uh, bloodline families, the world elite, the superclass, and they believe in this evolution, this Illuminati uh, alchemy of sorts, where it's all about timing, you know, pay attention to what your astrology is. Don't ignore astronomy and make decisions that will be based on that. And the amount of revenue that comes in will be exponentially larger than those around you. So it's super interesting that the African-American owner of the Airbnb where this family is staying, G.H. or George as he's known in the movie, talks about this super class, this friend that he has in the power elite who quite literally seems to obey these principles. He seems to hang out with this secret cabal that quote unquote runs the world and meets at the solstice. Now, interestingly, for a while, I thought it was kind of a joke how much planetary mention, how much cosmology was being shown. The fact that this family, you know, the uh, son and daughter of Ethan Hawke and Julia Roberts in the movie, the daughter is wearing a NASA t-shirt and the son is wearing an Obey t-shirt, which has all kinds of occult symbolism included there. I mean, of course, NASA, which is uh, among the least trusted government entities Ever, and obey, you know, um, just do what you're told. Really interesting choices of t-shirts, especially when you consider the film is produced executively by a former president of the United States. Okay, so getting back to this super class or power elite, this secret cabal of friends, who G.H. or George claims his acquaintance is a member of and jokingly says, the secret cabal that runs the world and meets at the solstice. This is a head nod to the um, quite literal secret planned collapse of the planet and the, you know, destruction of society as we know it, but it's done incrementally and it's planned and these people at the top levels of elitism are aware of it. So many people ask, why would they do this? Well, they are the elites. And they would try to coordinate this societal destruction of humanity so that they can then rebuild it to their specifications. You know, it's much like you see in uh, land development. It's easier oftentimes to just knock a building down and start from scratch to get it exactly the way you want it. The owners of the land, of course, are the ones who decide. And the best way to micromanage and get everything just right and perfect the way that these lords of the land want it are, you know, to many times completely reset the structures, the projects, and the entire situation. And I like that example of a building because, yeah, it's easier to just destroy society, 
as it is, just destroy it all, get it back down to rubble, and build it back up again to get it exactly the way you want it and have total and complete control of everything. So there it is. That's the explanation of why the elites would want to destroy everything and build it back up. Now, the all-seeing eye, the eye of providence, is what's keeping an eye on these cycles, humanity, society. And that is how these elites are timing when to make their move, correct? Or when to be aware of it. Remember that this is based on the novel by Ruman Alam. And the, the intro to the entire movie has a lot of these all-seeing eyes. It has um, Teslas, it has crosses, it has deer, all kinds of matrixy imagery flying across the screen and changing before your very eyes, you know, from uh, one thing to another. Airplanes changing to crosses, I believe. Um, Teslas. Uh, and Teslas become a part of the whole cyber attack. They actually become weaponized, at least if they have that autopilot feature. And they, they clog up the main arteries of the highway system so nobody can get anywhere. Reminded me a lot of the whole Maui situation. If you can clog up the area and then reduce it to rubble, you have a blank slate to rebuild a city the way you want it. Turn it into a smart city. Turn it into whatever you want. But yeah, this was very interesting. Again, so much blue in the movie. And we saw a lot of blue in the Maui fired and destruction there was a lot of conspiracy revolving around the color blue and how it seemed that things with the color blue seemed to somehow escape the wrath of this fire storm right because that's how they that's how they kind of uh gave it to us the media that this was sort of like a fire storm that it was ravaged but somehow naturally occurring and it was a natural disaster that not that there were people setting fires or that there was direct energy weapons or there was anything along those lines. No, it was more along the lines of this was uh, due to climate change, that this this naturally occurring fire was due to climate change. The world, Gaia, nature attacked Maui. Interesting, interesting symbolism, especially how it included this intense blue coloring as well. And symbolism seems to be a big part of this film. Keep in mind, executively produced by the Obamas, which would make sense, right? We're talking about people who may know about some of this um, royal symbolism, whether blue or not. And they are working on all kinds of interesting projects. I think they have over 17 film projects so far. They've signed deals with Audible, uh, Spotify, Netflix, and they're working on something interesting. The UFO abduction story of Betty and Barney Hill. Of course, this has everything that would, you know, fall into the soup that intrigues, you know, people. And especially with all of the latest wish whistleblower activity revolving around the government and UFOs. Of course, Betty and Barney Hill were a African-American male and a white female. So you have, you know, the, uh, the, the race issue there involved with UFOs as well. And um, it's going to be interesting to uh, analyze and look at that as well. It should be pretty interesting. I mean, it's one of the most amazing cases in ufology, period, no matter what your stance is of it is what you think took place with Betty and Barney Hill, whether it was a government project, an actual experience or event with real UFOs and non-human intelligences, or something completely different. Whatever, it's still one of the most important UFO cases of all time, so I can't wait to see what they do with that. Interesting that they would pick that topic. Now, in the best-selling book, Shadowland, Obama is exposed as, well, having some very interesting elements revolving around his quote-unquote birth certificate. I'm not going to go there. However, Shadowland is all about the deep state actors 
who are at war with what seems to be the social norm, Christianity, and America's destiny. So it seems as if the esoteric, the occult, and possible alchemy are nothing new to some of these players. And I'm not going to delve into a whole expose or uh, the uncovering of the different layers of the Obamas, although there are some strange conspiracies out there, of course. We, we do have a significant amount of conspiracy revolving around this couple. There is um, those in the conspiracy world who believe that, of course, Michelle is a man. That one's been going on for some time. Of course, White House security and Secret Service have uh, come forward with some interesting conspiracies about the Obamas. And we, of course, have older conspiracies that lead into the whole uh, Barry Satoro rabbit hole. But this is not going to be an analysis of the Obamas. I'm most definitely going to focus myself on leave the world behind. And it is interesting, though, that they are the executive producers, because executive producers often not only support the filming, but have say in some of the symbolism that takes place. And the symbolism here is huge. The Beginning of the show, when they finally get to their destination, they love the home, they go to a beach, and a massive oil tanker comes rushing in full steam onto the beach. They have to move. Pretty horrific little spot of the uh, movie. And on the oil tanker, it says, The White Lion. Interesting phrase, correct? Well, there was a ship one of their very first slave ships, which was an English privateer ship operating under a Dutch letter of mark, which was called the White Lion. It brought the first African-American slaves to the colony of Virginia in 1619, an entire year before the arrival of the Mayflower in New England. And though the African-American captives were sold as endangered servants, The event is regarded as the start of African-American slavery in the colonial history of the United States. So that's huge, right? We have this huge, massive oil tanker, it's what it's believed to be, running aground right there, uh, moving these people on vacation out of the way. And it is called the White Lion. Very interesting and very, very illuminated imagery and illustration of an event. So maybe the symbolism is in fact deeper than most believe. Now keep note of that 1619, you know, date, 1619, when the white lion came in a year before the Mayflower, because in the Jeep Grand Cherokee that Ethan Hawke is driving in the movie, He is flipping through the channels trying to find any evidence or information about the attack taking place, the unraveling of society, and he happens to stop on the radio station 1619 AM as well as in American. So that's really interesting. Just kind of weaving together this uh, esoteric symbolism throughout the film there are these correlations of numerology and imagery that are hard to escape this numerology pops in various points of the movie when the family takes the exit off of the freeway they take exit 76 to point comfort now remember at the beginning of the podcast i pointed out 1776 the beginning of the illuminati 1776 the height of the One World Trade Center, which is uh, shown in the symbolic imagery at the beginning of the movie. And Exit 76 is what's taken to point comfort. Now, let's not forget that the United States was independent in 1776 and that Ethan Hawke, when he wakes up, his name is Clay in the movie, when he wakes up, 
in bed in that blue room, he has a 76 coffee mug right next to him. So lots of 76s. And it's like that with a few other things in the movie, as well as the checkerboard significations, some of the clothing articles, some of the floors, you know, that black and white checkerboard pattern. In fact, even Ethan Hawke's quote unquote Clay's shirt from a distance looks like a checkerboard for part of the movie. And the checkerboard is, of course, like the chessboard of life, among other things, Most Masonic temples have a checkerboard floor. Won't get into the symbolic reference there, but there are amazing amounts of checkerboards, straight lines, and numerological patterns that take place throughout the length of this film. Keep in mind that the symbolism of other pop media keeps popping up, no pun intended. Lots of bright blue colors like uh, the bright blue colors that were seen in Maui after the fire ravaged the area, and blue was the only color that seemed to survive. Interestingly enough, this was uh, something that took place during what's known as the Lion's Gate, involving the star Sirius, one of the most alchemical, esoteric, and ritually based or charged time frames And um, when a gate is actually opened, right, where these energies are allowed to flow, that's when the Maui fires took place. A lot of this blue coloring is in this movie as well. And you can't escape it. There are surreal uh, blues throughout the movie. Very, very deep blues, bright blues, much like the umbrellas, the cars, the, the rooftops, the things that survived the Maui devastation. Interestingly, there was, of course, the large freighter, the White Lion that I spoke of, which not only shares a name with the first slave ship to America, but there is what's known as the Lion's Gate, which is the opening of a gate or a portal or a time frame when energies are manifested through ritual, through timing, through cyclical charts. And of course, this involves the esoteric and the star Sirius and Aleister Crowley, many other magicians consider this one of the most energetic times to do some of these um, more powerful magical rituals, spells, energies could be utilized for whatever the goal is. And so we have, again, the lion symbolism and the magnificent synergy of the cosmos back to those belief systems of the Elites, the elites, those who believe in the creation and the manifestation of powers with natural cycles. And it's the annual alignment of the sun in Leo and the star Sirius, if you're looking at it from the cosmic realm. So the symbolism of the bright blues, the symbolism of the white lion, and keep in mind that the Lion's Gate portal, these are some of the some of the terms that I found that the vortex allows supercharged light codes to flood our planet. Pretty pretty wild consciousness awareness, enhanced intuition, enhanced psychic abilities, unexpected endings, and new beginnings, that reset, that that beginning. Um, very interesting stuff. And there's a lot of numerical sequences involving 1111, which we see an 11 uh, during the movie, and other numerological symbols and synchronicities. So it seems as if the creators of this movie were fully aware or extremely lucky of this esoteric symbolism. Now, I want to jump into some of the shirts and clothing and things that the protagonists in this movie wear. There is obviously the belief that clothing is cover and a very good way to cover things up to occult things. And the clothing in this movie is extremely occult. There is the sun's shorts, Archie's shorts, which have, again, uh, on the sides of the lodge, the black and white checkerboard. There is the shirt 
of the daughter who has the NASA symbol. The son, Archie, wears a T-shirt that says Obey. The father, Clay, who is Ethan Hawke, wears a shirt that says Bikini Kill. And that is a punk rock band. Looked it up. It's got all kinds of occult and esoteric imagery along with it. And there is Julia Roberts and her clothing choices as well. She always seems to be wearing long, loose tops, whether uh, blue, um, white, and they are very, they, they, they accentuate her thinness, yet move very differently than one would expect. As I said, they're, they're, they're longer, longer, blue, loose wearing tops. And like I said, the blue is very interesting. And when she wears a white sweater, it is still over a blue undergarment. So there's always this white and blue thing going on. There are also some purples that lean into the blue. And uh, in, in the parts where she does wear those purples, which are kind of white and blue together, um, Ethan Hawke is also wearing the same colors the purple and the white. So very interesting imagery from the nature of the clothing to the imagery of what the clothing says. You know, t-shirts that say NASA, t-shirts that say Obey, shorts that have the checkerboard, and uh, one of the shirts that Ethan Hawke wears from a distance looks like a checkerboard. The, the, The colors seem to go in line with the rest of the symbolism. The same is true of the animals that are shown in the film. There are a variety of animals due to this cyber attack and the strange frequencies purportedly being able to change uh, the patterns of migration, which I couldn't figure out. But anyway, that doesn't matter. That was the um, the point, is that these strange... Um, frequencies, whether electromagnetic or otherwise, could actually change the patterns of the migration of these animals. And we had all kinds of different animals that show up, namely the deer, again, back to probably the most symbolic and esoteric. But there was also flamingos in the swimming pool with pink and blue, very strange at night, almost like a bubbling effervescence. And there was uh, birds flying in the sky, other birds that were flying in ways that seemed very distressed. But the deer seemed to be the most interesting symbolism of all. Uh, There is a point where Ethan Hawke, uh, the protagonist who is known as Clay, um, hears from his daughter that she saw a bunch of deer in the backyard. And he says, oh, well, that's interesting. And then at another point in the movie, Um, They are talking about the deer and he again says, oh, well, that's a good omen about this deer sighting with the daughter. And he literally says in Mesoamerican mythology, that is a good omen. Omen. My gosh, I can't talk. That is a good omen in Mesoamerican mythology. Well, that's not necessarily the truth, because for the native tribes of North America, Central America and South America, deer are considered at least shamanically, messengers, animals of power, and a totem representing sensitivity, intuition, and gentleness. Now, this was interesting symbology and imagery because the deer is a way to honor the animal by giving its life to sustain us, so to give an offering to the creator, back to the El, the creator god, the Elites. And this this offering this sacrifice, right, this this blood sacrifice is for providing the animal to us to serve us. And so it has a very interesting esoteric elite significance. And let's not forget that the hunter's moon, when Matthew Perry died, who the movie is riddled with friends, that the, the same daughter who saw the deer wanting to watch the last Friends episode, Interestingly, she, you know, is the one that brings it up to the attention where this commentary takes place. And Matthew Perry died on a hunter's moon, which is when the hunters would go out because of the amazing moonlight to hunt deer. 
again, this blood sacrifice. But it doesn't end there. The deer symbolism continues throughout the entire movie. In fact, there is a point where G.H.'s, George's daughter, is surrounded by deer outside of this creepy cabin, and it looks like they are quite literally about to sacrifice her, the roles reversing, and Julia Roberts comes down and they both start yelling at the deer in a very uh, frenzied way. So the deer symbolism just keeps getting deeper and deeper. And keep in mind that not just Mesoamerican, but deer are known all over the world because they live on just about every continent and they are very important subjects in all mythologies and folklore. In fact, they have very important meanings spiritually for most tribal cultures. And they seem to be a spirit animal and an important guide who th- for those specifically who feel that devotion is important and grace and intuition. And that's exactly what takes place in this event where Julia Roberts comes down to protect G.H.'s or George's daughter from this quote-unquote perceived deer attack. And what's interesting about that is they had just discussed how they agreed that they hated humans, they hated humanity, they hated what they had become, and that the important thing was to take care of one another, and that's exactly what takes place. Very important significance there, revolving around this important animal, the deer. So quite literally, the deer keep coming up. They are sacrificial animals for our own benefit to the creator god, El, whom the Elites worship, the elites. Not to mention the importance to just about every tribal culture. The deer seems to have important significance as a sacrificial animal there for our own benefit. So are the deer representing the people in this movie? I believe that they are. They are representing the plebeians, the commoners, the um, regular humans who are being sacrificed for the benefit of the elites. Just my spin on it, just my take, but the deer symbolism goes throughout the entire movie. And, you know, going out on a limb a little bit, I think that the hint of a civil war is here through the predictive programming because we have another film coming out, I believe, uh, very soon that's going to go into this civil war scenario as well. I think it's A24. I could be wrong on the name. I think it's A24. But, um, I think that Civil War is also in the predictive programming of Leave the World Behind because we don't know who the attacker is. And if you can destabilize the government, there are three points that are objectified in the film. Basically destabilizing the government, letting people kind of run amok and kill themselves, run each other into the ground, and then coming in and doing a sort of coup d'etat. This is what G.H. or George the African-American male who owns the Airbnb says to Julia Roberts during a conversation that these are the three, this is the way to destabilize. And actually not only the way, it's the least expensive way to uh, not only save a few bucks, but destabilize the government and take over. And he used the word coup d'etat, which makes me think civil war is a part of the predictive programming and that the deer or the sacrificial lambs, so to speak, are one side or the other, if not the whole enchilada. You know, we don't know how badly this societal collapse will be before the reset takes place and everything is built back up. But the, uh, the, the reality is this, is this is a big deal because this is the number one Google search item uh, for the week, we have Leave the World Behind. We have, of course, um, a lot of videos on the uh, connection to the Obamas and Netflix and Higher Ground Productions. And among the search items listed for the week is also Civil War. So obviously the programming is there because that's what people are searching. Very interesting stuff. Leave the World Behind, war in general, but Civil War is also one of the most search items, Illuminati, um, uh, elites, and and this is this is 
this is part of the predictive programming of getting us used to the idea of societal collapse, of civil war, of war in general, and more or less just kind of pulling that carpet of safety below our feet out from under us. And as I'm doing my research here, I noticed that A24 is not the name of the movie. A24 is the name of the company producing the movie. It's called Civil War, which is going to be released April 26, 2024 in the United States. And this is an important date. The I'll get into that in just a minute. But it's an upcoming epic action war film written and directed by Alex Garland. The film is going to uh, basically go into a civil war scenario here in the United States. And um, the basic idea is that states are seceding and people are quite literally going to battle, much like some of the predictive programming in Leave the World Behind. The difference with the A24 production, it's just known as civil war, is that it depicts a not-so-united United States, in which 19 states, keep an eye on that number, we just had the C-19, but this is a movie where, quote-unquote, 19 states have seceded, and breakaway republics are advancing on Washington, D.C. So this is really interesting, because A24 is an interesting, interesting movie production warehouse. They did everything, everywhere, all at once. Uh, So they're very, very well, you know, grounded. They've done Uncut Gems, um, Lady Bird, Moonlight. Uh, They did HBO's Euphoria. They did Talk to Me. They've done a lot of films that are off the chain. So these guys know what they're doing. And talk about predictive programming. This film coming out and then uh, the A24 film called Civil War coming out on April 26th. And um, it's going to be released April 26th, 2024. So I started looking into what's the deal? You know, why why is this April 26, 2024 date of importance? Well, not to get off of Leave the World Behind, but let me go into it for just a second. Okay, so this is coming out April 26th, 2023 which is leading into Beltane. Of course, the May 1st date after Walpurgis Night. And this is when spiritual entities are known to be able to cross behind, from behind the veil into our reality, a very important date for the elites and the superclass. In fact, the days between those dates are uh, known as the 13 days of preparation. Now, keep in mind, when you look at how many days are between these two films, we're talking about 32 weeks and two days. That's 32 weeks and two days, which is, of course, three, two, two. Now, interesting with this is the A24 film Civil War. The trailer is lengthwise two minutes and 23 seconds, which, of course, reversed, inverted, is 322. Keep in mind that 223 is also the caliber of what our boys use in battle. The AR-15 is a 223, which is 322 inverted. So again, we're back to this timestamp of 223, lending credence to the Order of Skull and Bones, Genesis 322, and many other 322, 223, symbolisms. What's interesting is the other strange thing is this also has to do with Baal worship. Baal, of course, is one of the offspring creations of the creator god El, of the Elites, the El Eats. And if you look at the cover art of Leave the World Behind, you actually see Baal written there. It has Julia Roberts listed first. And if you follow the B from Julia Roberts down, you see that it spells B-A-A-L. Very interesting. And then, of course, the imagery of the stag or the deer on the front of it. 
check that out if you have a chance. Go to Leave the World Behind Film. You can find it on Wikipedia or Google Images. And it says Julia Roberts on the B of Roberts. Follow that down and you've got B-A-A-L. Ball. And this movie was released November 22nd, 2023. So that's, that's important because, of course, we have again 2023. Remove the zero, flip it, invert it. We have 322. And then it's streamed December 8th, 2023 with Netflix. It's received a lot of attention. And I believe that these two films are related in that they have similar predictive programming. War of some sort, civil or otherwise. We're not sure on Leave the World Behind who the enemy is, which also makes it scarier. We have an, a part of the movie where drones are dropping pamphlets, these little cards, and it says Death to America. Yet Kevin Bacon, which we haven't even got to the Kevin Bacon part, but Kevin Bacon says he talked to a buddy. He's like the most prepared guy, right, in the whole movie, in the whole script. The guy that's got everything, the water, the food, the guns, the ammo. And tells them of a location of a bunker nearby. But he says, yeah, I talked to a buddy. The buddy said he saw the same thing. These pamphlets released and that they said it was Korea who was attacking them. So we have basically this deception on who the attacker is to try to catch people off guard. And not knowing who the attacker is makes it all the more scary. So yeah, back to the Illuminati ideals and the elite games that they play. Kevin Bacon is in the film, but in a very small part. And there is a game, a parlor game, where players challenge each other to arbitrarily choose an actor and then connect them to another actor via a film that both actors have appeared in together, repeating the process to try to find the shortest path that ultimately leads to the prolific American actor Kevin Bacon. It's called Six Degrees of Kevin Bacon, or Bacon's Law. And it's pretty interesting how that works, because it's an interesting game, and we know the elites like to play games. And this is interesting that Kevin Bacon is included in the movie, albeit in a very small part. So the six degrees of Kevin Bacon is important, too, because it goes back to some of the numerology in the film, which is sixes and nines. Now, Ruth is the daughter of G.H. Scott, or George in the film, who own the house where the uh, Amanda Sanford and her husband Clay, which is Julia Roberts and Ethan Hawke, where they are renting. And interestingly, the daughter... Ruth has a 9-6 tattooed on her left shoulder. Now, we've already had the 7-6s throughout the film, and here we have a 9-6. Of course, 9-6 has an important esoteric numerology as well. We all know about 6-9, the yin and the yang, but 9-6 is, of course, the inverted version of 6-9. Now, 9-6 is also the 9 above, the 6 below, as above, so below. And if you overlay... The orb of nine and the six over each other, you get what looks like a spinning galaxy, an Anja Chakra galactic consciousness and universal consciousness if you want to look at it cosmologically. The movie Leave the World Behind is also 141 minutes of running time with which if you add those digits, you come up with six. So there are sixes, sixes everywhere. Okay, so the numerology is, is just crushing it uh, with Leave the World Behind, and it seems to incorporate this other movie by A24 Productions known as Civil War. The Leave the World Behind movie was released for streaming on December 8th, 2023, and there are quite literally 226 days from the start date to the end date of the next movie. So seven months, 12 days, excluding the end date, which comes out to quite literally 32 weeks and two days. Three, two, two. And the coincidences of predictive programming don't stop there. I'll keep crushing. It keeps going. And for those who think we're not close to civil war, I mean, come on. We have 
this 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 is unbelievable the uh differences of opinion that we have it is quite literally off the chain in fact i just heard of speaking of ball worship satanic worship and the like a uh, statue of the a satanic statue of i believe the baphomet if i'm not mistaken at the iowa capitol building with an altar and the whole deal everything going for it was literally just targeted by people who put a nativity scene nearby it a, a long story short a journalist walked in and got so upset that he destroyed the statue he was of course arrested because there can't be um you know uh favoritism for one religion or another no matter how mystic whether it's ball worship satanic worship or christianity you can't pick favorites right separation of church and state so the journalist was arrested now many are paying for his attorneys um, wealthy individuals are paying for the journalists attorneys this is just an example i heard about this today this is an example of how separated we are not only spiritually and politically but also the ideologies that people hold in their minds as being important are vastly different so the possibility of a civil war is probably higher than it has been since our original civil war. Now, the movie Leave the World Behind, of course, delves into the possibility of a cyber attack. And a lot of people are probably thinking this is far-fetched, but it is not. As some of you know, I recently went to Central America to investigate a bunch of things. And investigations were amazing. But what's what took place when I got back stateside was pretty wild. Some of my family members were contacted by phone by someone who was trying to sound like me or an algorithm or AI program of voice synthesis that was sounding like me asking for money. Now, what's fascinating about this is my mom was still in Central America. She immediately called me. I said, no, I'm not calling them asking them for money. Of course not. And so they no longer took that call coming in. Now, it wasn't just one family member, it was another. Now, coming back to the cyber attack situation, this is something that is taking place with AI. This hacking of someone's voice, especially people with like podcasts like myself or people that are well known. They can get a hold of your voice, put it through this synthesis, this machine learning software that can then formulate sentences with your voice. Now, where it lacks is the intonation, right? The cadence. And that's where my mom actually heard one of the conversations and she could tell right away it's not him. The intonation is wrong. The cadence is wrong, even though the voice is trying. So very interesting. Now, I was involved in a data breach, a cybersecurity hack, again, a cyber attack on 23andMe, you know, the DNA genetic uh, company that gets your DNA, your g genetic. And it is possible that it, what's interesting is it's possible that some of the breach came from there because from what I understand, that 23andMe cyber attack was very much trying to target certain bloodlines for uh, this, this type of hacking, um, different types of hacking, but this is one of them that AI was incorporating. And get this, they were targeting certain bloodlines and the most targeted bloodline was the Ashkenazi Jews, according to one of my sources. So... Very interesting that this would take place. It is happening. Cyber attacks are real. The possibility of a civil war is definitely getting to a near boiling point and tensions are high. Now, getting back to the elites, the ritual solstices that are mentioned in the movie Leave the World Behind, keep in mind that historically, throughout humanity's history, angels and different deities that are brought about through invocation are basically brought into this space, this reality during those particular times, like the solstice, um, much like the date Beltane, that it, where A24 production of Civil War is going to be coming out, 13 days of preparation before it. And the the reality is that these cinemagicians, these masters of cinema, know these dates and they drop these clues or cues either on purpose as a type of uh, revelation of the method, as they call it, which the elites do, or they drop them in there as spice just because they know the numbers and they want to make it intriguing. Either way, these things 
have a way of coming true. This this is a casting, right, of a spell, casting of the people in the cast of the movie. This is a casting. And when you drop, even if you sprinkle these magical ingredients in there, these cues, these clues, these these symbols, there is a significance that takes place whether you want it to or not. And it's not just the cinemagicians that do this. It's the actual magicians. In fact, David Copperfield says he plans to make the moon disappear in an epic stunt 30 years in the making. Now, this is really interesting because as many magicians know, the bigger the prestige, the bigger the magic trick, the longer it takes if it's actual ritual magic. And this is interesting because David Copperfield is saying he's going to make the moon disappear from the sky in February 2024. And he aims to showcase the power we all have to create a huge change in the world by making the moon disappear. The magician will show that no challenge is impossible to overcome. And of course, he is doing it in the name of Save the Children, which is, uh, you know, you can donate, stay informed, a great organization, but save the children from what? You know, other dark, uh, impactful, influential people who are trafficking children? It seems as if this is interesting. So anyway, he is going to make the moon disappear. And as usual, magicians do this and they, they can they can assess this for a positive cause, but we don't know the magic being utilized and many magicians know that the moon is in fact a symbol of magic. So we have real magicians doing these interesting things. We have cinemagicians including this interesting symbology that is esoteric in nature. Everybody seems to be doing it. No one seems to be paying attention, but revelation of the method is how you energize the prestige in a magic trick. So keep your eyes open. Keep your eyes to the skies, feet on the ground, but don't forget to take a look around. And if you haven't gone over to happinessmedical.com, please check it out. I know Christmas is coming up. You're probably needing stocking stuffers. We've got the best thing for you, and it will support the podcast. It is Spice Natural Bronze. It is a formulation uh, of ingredients that my wife invented. It is the first all-organic hydrating and moisturizing bronzer that is technologically infused with coconut oil, aloe vera, and other organic ingredients. This stuff will keep your skin feeling amazing through the dry winter months, and you'll be able to retain that tan you got in the warm summer months. Your significant other, or even you, won't be disappointed. This is great stuff, and it supports the podcast. Go on over, check it out at happinessmedical.com. And uh, a special Christmas offer if you want to Email me directly at pazlumi at gmail.com, P-A-Z-L-U-M-I at gmail.com. I will give you an amazing deal and pick up the shipping. I'll put it in the mail myself to you. Also check out heroparanormal.com. If you haven't gone over there, you're missing out on a ton of content. Don't miss out. Go over there. Check it out. And if you're listening via YouTube, do me the solid like, share, and subscribe to the podcast. Although I will most likely never be monetized on YouTube for a variety of reasons, including the truth. If you like, share, and subscribe to the podcast on YouTube, that will help me break through the algorithm of control. The shadow ban is real. Until next time, take care.